Released early this week for PC, Linux and Android, Pocket Dimension Clash 2 is a fun game created on open board by my good friend Douglas, aka O Illusionista, one of Brazil's most prolific and ancient open board developers. The dude has been working with this engine for years and has released countless games in many different genres. He's one of the people behind that Power Ranger game that I previewed a while back and now he's brought another beaten up for us, but before I forget, hi, I am Savino and welcome to the Flying Cave Channel. The story in Pocket Dimension Class 2, which I will call only Pocket Class 2 from now on, is in all honesty just an excuse to have characters from different games and universe together. It starts with Ryu, who, after years of street fighting, decided to open a dojo to pass his knowledge to a new generation of students, but something went wrong with him and whatever it was, was detected by the Talos device. Link, who was operating the device, noticed that something was wrong and called a team from all universe to stop Ryu and this mysterious power from spreading to other universes. The story will unfold as you play, with some cutscenes telling where you need to go next and so on. Look, I will not sit here and pretend the game has a great story, as I said in the beginning, it's just a good excuse to bring a bunch of characters into the same world, but what is here is fun to read and follow, although not at all necessary to enjoy the game. But if the story is not all that great and Come on, you can count on your fingers how many beaten ups have a great story. The graphics are... Well, first, let me confess something. It is very hard for me to find a beaten up made with open board that has good graphics. No, no, scratch that. I find it very hard to find a beaten up made with open board that has a good art direction. You see, most games made with open board use sprites from many different games with different pixel art styles and, in my humble opinion, it looks awful. I am not saying these games are bad. What I am saying is that I am probably an annoying person who is bothered by the complete lack of artistic direction most of these games have. In Pocket Clash 2, things are the opposite. I'm not sure what they did here, since I am stupid and didn't ask Douglas, but they create and or edit all the sprites for the game, making it artistically coherent, which is, at least for me, something beautiful to behold. The game, as you can see, has an 8-bit style that looks delightful with lots of colors and details all around, including some awesome parallax scrolling on most levels. There is also a lot of life and movement on these backgrounds with clouds moving around and trees swinging in the wind, I mean, it looks great. The characters have this chibi look and they all look adorable. I'm not into this chibi look too much, but come on, take a look at this small Chun-Li, how can you say you don't like it, she's so cute. And sure, to accompany all the work they put into the graphics, the animation is also very good, especially considering you're looking at a game with an 8-bit aesthetic. The way your character and the enemies move, your strikes, everything here was made with a lot of attention to detail. Take a look at how Guy walks and tell me this isn't awesome. In my opinion, this is probably the best looking game I ever played on open board and I would love to see more fun games with this level of care and artistic coherence. When it comes to the sound, the game is also packed with good stuff. Here, you will be visiting four different universes, each one belonging to a different game and in each you will find the most classic of the tunes. From Ryu's theme to Double Dragon, there's no bad cheap tune here, there's no original music either, but who will be complaining about that when you can listen to this? Thank <laughs> you. 
obviously they did an exceptional job picking these songs. I would say they are a perfect fit for the game, but of course they are. They are classic songs from beaten ups and fighting games, so there is nothing more fitting than that. The sound effects are also pretty good, although a bit low if you don't mess with the options. They are what you would hear in a NES game, and although it may sound simple at first, if you pay attention, you will notice that each character class has its own set of sound effects. It's a pretty cool small detail, and while this is something you would obviously expect in a game, it's cool to see that it was not overlooked in here. The game also has an announcer telling the name of the characters you choose and the game they belong to, and it's a pretty cool voice with the quality reduced to fit the whole game's aesthetics. As I said before, artistic coherence. Finally, let's take a look at the combat and my friends, I have to say that you are in for a treat here. The game plays awesomely and the controls are simple and complex at the same time. Don't worry, I will explain this in a bit. Here you have an attack button, a jump, a block, a special button and a break. Also, you can run by tapping twice on the direction of which will allow you to jump further and unleash some stronger attacks. But what I would like to call your attention here is the special button. With it, you can unleash a bunch of special attacks that will consume the blue bar under your health. This bar is extremely generous and will refill automatically with time. And to compensate for that, your specials are not too strong, but they are essential to extend your combos and punish your enemies, unless you use your super special, which will consume the whole bar in exchange for a great damage output. And here, in the special, is where the controls can be as complex or simple as you like. In Pocket Clash 2, you have two options, using classic fighting game commands or a more simplified style. Let's take Gaio, for example. If you want to unleash a sonic boom, you can press down, forward and attack, or simply press your special. It's up to you how you would like to play the game. There's no mode to select here, both modes are available all the time, so you can change the way you play as you wish. I honestly don't know who would prefer the complex mode, but you guys are crazy and I bet one among you will never use the simple one. Tell me in the comments, I want to know who is the one. I mentioned earlier that you also have a break button which, obviously, is used to break you free when surrounded by enemies, but this one will cost a little bit of your health. Honestly, it's not much considering that your health can be upgraded a lot during the game, so you will be using your break sometimes to unleash longer and more powerful combos. It all works pretty well here, your moves connect perfectly and most of the hitboxes are spot on. The game feels easy to get acquainted with, and in no time you will be unleashing amazing combos on your enemies. The levels don't feel too long and that's a great thing because the game has 17 of them divided into 4 different universes. Pocket Clash 2 will take around 1 hour to finish, or maybe a bit more, I'm not sure I didn't clock it. But I can say that you won't notice the time passing because you will be too busy having a ton of fun. Another thing that will catch your attention is the number of playable characters. My friends, there's a ton of them. You will start with just a few, but as you play you will be unlocking new ones and you can change characters every time you beat a level, so there are plenty of reasons to try every one of them. Another detail that I really enjoyed when choosing your character is that you can see which archetype they fit. Zoner, melee, speedster, a terminology that is more frequently used in fighting games, but that I would love to see being more used in beaten ups. The characters play very differently from each other, even when they belong to the same category, so you will have room for a lot of experimentation here before electing a favorite. The game also has some extra modes like training mode, which strangely can only be accessed once you beat the game, the crystal palace where you can choose which world you want to jump in, and also an extra difficult mode unlocked after you beat the game three times. I would have had these things unlocked from the start with the exception of the crystal palace obviously, but that's just me. Although the game was officially released earlier this week, I can confirm that this isn't the game in its final form. The developer will update the game in the coming weeks and months to make it even better, but he had to launch it as it is because of reasons. And I'm glad he will, because despite the game being great, there are some bits here that I think would be nice to revisit. 
one thing that bothers me a lot in this game is the immense number of ranged enemies. I'm not against ranged enemies, they are an integral part of all beaten ups, but when you have a screen filled with only ranged enemies, things can get a little annoying. And there's also these snipers that can hit you no matter where you are in the plane. They can easily be killed with a running jump kick, but until you do it, they will annoy you without offering a good combat. There are also way too many environmental hazards in the game. Again, these are also integral parts of this type of game, but here they went a little overboard with it, especially with the ones near pits. Oh, yeah, the pits. If you fall on a pit, you won't lose a bit of health. Here you lose an entire life, and this annoys the heck out of me. Look, I know older games were all like that, but they were like that for a reason to artificially increase the difficulty of the game. And I don't think that in 2024 we need these types of resources to make a game challenging. Since we are no longer limited to small cartridges, there's no reason to punish the player for falling into a pit. If you want to challenge your players, put more enemies on the screen, give them more power or limit the usage of some of their moves, but taking an entire life for falling into a trap that is mostly out of the player's control is a bit cheap in my opinion. I'm not saying here that I'm right and the dev is wrong, it's a design choice, but it happens to be one that I don't like in beaten ups. I don't want to lose a life for something that is out of my control in these games. I want to die for a stronger enemy, which I still don't learn the patterns and not because a jet of fire started to swing throwing me into a pit. But again, the game will be updated and hopefully some of these annoyances will be solved. Another thing that I think should be addressed is how powerful the zoners can be. You see, since you can hit enemies from afar and your special bar is pretty generous, it can be pretty easy to kill some enemies and sometimes bosses just standing in one place and throwing your projectile at them. I mean, you can simply avoid this and go to town with your enemies, but for a game so tightly made, this was an oversight on the devs part. Maybe raising how much energy this move consumes could be a good solution. There are also some bosses that will abuse their powers, making it almost impossible to hit them, since they won't stay quiet teleporting all around the screen. I won't even mention the final boss because I don't want to spoil anything, but in the end, I was just glad I beat him, but not because of the challenge, but because he was extremely annoying and unfair. It was a feeling of relief and not conquest, and that's never good in a game. In the end, Pocket Dimension Clash 2 is a great game and a very welcome surprise in a year that not so many beaten ups are being released. And costing you absolutely nothing, there's no reason for you to not jump down in the description and click on the link to download the game. While there are some shortcomings here and there, some of which really pissed me off, I still highly recommend you to try this one. The combat is incredibly satisfying, the graphics are adorable, and there's a banger of a soundtrack that is a mix of nostalgia and adrenaline pumping tunes. This is a really cool game. And that's it for the video guys, I hope you enjoyed this small review and don't forget to look at the links below so you can check the game and follow the developer, he's a very cool guy who deserves a lot of praise for his outstanding work in the community. I will be back tomorrow with this video and Monday with another one, lots of cool things happening at the same time around here. Other than that, I hope you all have an awesome day and remember, keep it in.